right, I'm eating Fritos. Hi, everybody. I'm Skip Elsheimer. Welcome to the AV Geeks Lunchtime Streaming Show. It's all right. I took a big bite of Fritos, and then <laughs> I said, oh, no. Just went black. Okay. Anyways, um, we watch old 16 millimeter films here, and uh, yeah, so I have behind me on the film scanner, we're going to do an experiment. We're going to watch one, two, three, four NEM films, and um, kind of excited. Oh, yeah, so a uh, quick aside I was a Back when I was a kid, <clears throat> kid, before I went through puberty, uh, I think it was like second, third grade, I was very much into Fritos, and they had their mascot was uh, W.C. Fritos, and I, w I sent away, and I was a member of the fan club. So somewhere, I have like a certificate and some stickers. Um, there you go. W.C. Fritos. And that's basically how I found out who, who W.C. Fields was. All right. So anyways, I have a scanner here set up. We're going to watch some films, NEM. These are all made for people working in restaurants. Um, and some of this, there's definitely some vinegar syndrome going on. So we'll, we'll go as far as we can and we'll see what happens. So here we go. Enjoy. More kitchen accidents involve falls than any other kind of mishap. Learn how to prevent falls. Nobody has to be the fall guy. But we all realize that safety is everybody's job. What's the most dangerous object in this kitchen? This? No. This? No. This? No. According to accident statistics, the most dangerous object in the kitchen is the floor. Take a closer look. Over there, for example, a grease spot. And there, an onion peel. There, a freshly mopped area with no warning signs around it. This floor is as dangerous as a minefield. The floor of a busy kitchen can be deceptively deadly. Just because we take it so much for granted, the floor is the greatest cause of falling accidents. And it's all so unnecessary. The mishaps can't always be blamed on the floor itself. Proper footwear will prevent many spills. Flat heels for women, always. And for the men, rubber heels that are in good condition. Floors can be safe and dependable if everyone follows a few simple rules. First, if you drop something, pick it up. And that means anything you drop. Even a pencil can be a booby trap to some poor, unsuspecting guy or gal.
Small gritty particles such as sugar, sand, or gravel, they can put the skids under the best of men. That's right, you spilled it, you clean it up. If you spill grease, don't wait for the next guy. Take a piece of towel or burlap and wipe it up immediately. That's the second rule of floor safety. Wipe it up. Then sprinkle salt over the area to provide traction. For quick mop-up jobs, keep some soap in the mop pail ready for use. Whenever mopping is done, and whoever does it, follow the directions for the proper amount of soap to be used. These directions are usually printed on the container. Always mop with warm, soapy water to soak up dirt and grime. But don't forget, always mark the wet area with a sign big enough to be seen. Always dry mop immediately, removing all the excess soap and water. And watch for those low spots where puddles can form. Rule number three for floor safety, report all hazards to the management. Hazards such as piping or conduits running across traffic areas are invitations to disaster. Another big danger spot, stairways. If you're carrying a load, always make sure you can see your feet. And whenever possible, use the handrails provided. Stairways should always be properly lit. But lights are useless unless you turn them on. So far we have listed two of the danger areas where falls most often take place. Floors and stairways. Now the third place is... Hey, wait! If you must climb up, get a ladder! The third place where falls occur is in climbing. And a few simple rules can prevent ladder accidents from happening. First, make sure you have the right ladder for the job. Be sure it's strong enough and long enough. If it has grown weak with age or has been damaged with use, be sure to report it to the management. Check to make sure the last man to use it hasn't left something behind. It only takes a second to make sure the ladder is placed securely. Test it with your weight. As a last precaution, look around to make sure you're not climbing near a door that might swing open while you're aloft. Place the ladder so that it brings you close to the place where you have to work. That's why you've climbed up there in the first place. In other words, follow the rules for ladder safety. Why should you be the fall guy? These are the places where falling accidents most often happen. The floor, the stairs, and in climbing. They all seem harmless enough in themselves. But when the action starts, it's a different story. When the action starts, if your kitchen is a minefield full of booby traps, it's too late. Now, while things are more or less normal, while you've got a little time to think, now is the time to realize that safety is everybody's job. going to keep rolling here that was great uh, probably the most um, slapsticky and hilarious of the 
any M films that we've seen so far. From the very oh, finest fine. restaurants to the average commercial operation, teamwork is the secret of service. But there is one member of the team who, if he does his job right, is almost invisible. And that man is you, the busboy. If you do your job right, people hardly know you're around. But you're important. Maybe you've never stopped to think about it, pal. But without the job you do, things would come to a screeching halt without you, Mr. Busboy. Enter the busboy. Since your job takes you out in front, neatness and good grooming are vital. You may be invisible a lot of the time, but when you are seen, be seen at your best. Know what is expected of you by your employer, in appearance and in your duties. You'll be surprised how much more comfortable you'll feel on the job. Do your cleaning work thoroughly. Always remember that you are preparing for guests. Remember to clean the chairs also each time they are vacated by a guest. Always keep an eye out for wear or damage to chairs. When handling table service, be sure to keep your hands away from that part of the metal which comes into contact with the food. Every busboy should learn the proper table setting for the establishment which employs him. This is a standard setting. Each piece of silverware should be parallel to the next piece, with handles all the same distance from the table's edge. Learn good work habits and take pride in all the materials of your work. Glasses should be checked for water spots and traces of lipstick. For sanitary reasons, keep your hand as far away as possible from the lip of the glass. Now your tables are cleaned and set, and your guests have arrived. Now you are part of a food service team, which aims to make eating a pleasant experience from start to finish. Your attitudes have a great deal to do with how much your guests will enjoy their meal. Polite, efficient service is always appreciated. Your first duty is usually the serving of ice water. Water and all beverages are served from the guests right whenever possible. When filling a glass, don't pick it up. Make sure it is in a safe spot and pour. of the meal, you are an important part of the team. It is your duty to assist the servers in anything they may ask you to do, such as filling coffee cups, helping prepare an item of food, or bringing butter to the table. Remember that any food item, such as butter, should be presented first to the ladies. When removing plates between courses, it is sometimes necessary to ask if guests are finished. In many places, house policy requires that plates be removed from the guests left. But the convenience of the guest comes first. In the handling of soil dishes especially, quietness and politeness are the rule. There are a few simple rules also about bussing dishes which will save you and everybody else a lot of headaches. Load the heavy items and lighter items for good balance. You will save wear and tear on the china and on yourself by stacking plates carefully and not too high. Nearly 75% of dish breakage occurs on the dirty dish table. You can do your part to prevent this by placing glasses, cups, and silverware in their proper places.
Keeping people happy is a big part of your job. An alert busboy who is always ready for those small extra services adds greatly to the enjoyment of the guests. Keeping water glasses filled may seem to be a minor detail, but prompt attention will give your guests the feeling that extra care is being taken to make their meal a pleasant one. You can give them that feeling simply by paying close attention to the progress of the meal and noticing any time when something seems to need attention. It is always pleasant to know that there is someone around who is trying his best to be of service. Your other duties should not keep you from noticing those moments of crisis which arise when you can step in and be helpful. And while we're on the subject, ashtrays should be emptied when they become unsightly. Part of your job is to make the meal a clean and neat experience from beginning to end. Yes, keeping people happy is everybody's job in the food service business. But many of the most important little details fall on the busboy. Long after they've forgotten what was on the menu that night, they will remember the atmosphere. Whether it was friendly and efficient, whether they were treated as guests, or as just another bunch of customers. And you, the busboy, will have helped make that atmosphere a pleasant one. After they've gone, oops, don't spoil your record. It's safer and more sanitary to handle them one at a time. Like that. People, waiters, dishwashers, other busboys. Getting along with people is a talent no busboy can get along without. But it's surprising how much better people seem when you know your job and take pride in it. The atmosphere just wouldn't be the same. For you, Mr. Busboy, are an important member of the food service team. All right, we're going to keep going. Keep on rolling. Uh, so this is the same company that made the film, Mr. Dish Machine Operator. So it's possible that the, the lowest tier jobs in a restaurant are affixed with the Mr. What do you think about when you serve a table full of guests? You think about doing your job, of course. You think about all the things you've learned, courtesy, good service. And maybe once in a while you let yourself go and you think about the tip. Why not? But have you ever thought about your responsibility for the health and even the lives of the people you serve? The food you set before them with your hands could be carrying serious illness. Think about it. Dining room sanitation begins at home with your morning shower or bath. Total body cleanliness, including frequent shampoos, is a must. And so are clean fingernails, deodorants, and all the other details of good personal hygiene and grooming. But what's all this got to do with keeping your guests in good health? Take a look. Meet another family. 
colony of germs. They carry disease and they're everywhere. Your problem is to keep this family from meeting this one. And the best protection you can give them is cleanliness. His hands appear to be nice and clean, but are they? Sure, he showered and shaved this morning too. But think about where their hands have been since this morning. Those are just a few of the things your hands do in a short time. That's why they must be washed frequently and with plenty of soap. All right, now that they're clean, let's talk about some of the things you should do with them. Always handle dishes by their rims like this to keep their eating surfaces sanitary. Notice that the thumb is along the rim, but not in the food or the eating area. Handle glasses by the base. Think of the hundreds of glasses you touch daily. And remember that the lives of that many people are in your hands. Butter is easily contaminated. Always handle it with a clean fork or tongs. In fact, just to be on the safe side, it's best to act as if germs are present all the time, no matter how careful you are. When handling silverware, do not touch the eating surface. And if you should happen to drop something, always lay the contaminated one aside and use another clean one in its place. Smoking in the dining room is always dangerous. Do not smoke in any area where food is prepared or served. Your fingers become contaminated by the moisture of your mouth. So after smoking, wash your hands before you handle food or utensils again. Next to personal cleanliness comes dining room cleanliness. Tablecloths should be changed whenever they are soiled. Food spots and particles make excellent breeding places for germs. Chairs must be cleaned and washed frequently. With all these free rides available, you can be sure there are always plenty of germs around. And tabletops especially in those restaurants that do not use cloth covers. Soap and water and a thorough scrubbing with a clean cloth. Keep an eye out for soiled menus. They get passed from hand to hand all day long and carry germs in every food spot. Inspect china and glassware frequently to make sure the dishwasher is doing his job and to check for cracked or chipped items. It may look like a tiny crack to you, but to a germ, it's like a trench in his warfare against humanity. Germs hide and breed wherever and whenever you give them a chance. Any place there is food and moisture, Any place there is food unprotected by refrigeration. Any place there is a crack or crevice where moisture and food can collect. 
but most of all, germs are carried by human hands. To keep the deadly hitchhikers out, take a close look at your hands. Make sure they're free of cuts and sores where infection can lurk. If they're not, don't handle food. It pays to know the dangers and to take all the proper precautions. It pays to stop and think once in a while that it's your responsibility to keep them healthy and happy. That way, you can be sure they'll be back again. I didn't think we'd be in the shower with her, but there you go. Um, all right, one more film. Uh, enjoy. Ever wonder what you'll be doing at this time tomorrow? Will you be on the job, safe and sound? It seems quiet enough now, but when food is being served, things get pretty hectic. Even a small injury can cost you time off. That pain in the paycheck nobody wants. So take out a little insurance on tomorrow now with a few minutes of thought about dining room safety. <laughs> dining room safety, protecting yourself as well as others, begins before the guests arrive. Be sure all equipment is working properly and report all hazards immediately. For the protection of your guests, some things which don't usually look hazardous often have to be watched carefully. A knife and fork are standard equipment for adults, but in the hands of a young child, they can become dangerous weapons. Children can often make do with nothing more than a spoon. It's important to be alert for small dangers to your guests. Make sure when you pick up an order that china and glassware are not chipped. There is always a chance that fragments of glass or china may get into food. Kitchen and dining room personnel must work as a team, cooperating for total safety. Hey, look out! Yes, doors can be dangerous, too. Use the proper entrances and exits, or you may really be out. Skill in traffic jams is high on the list of good safety habits. Let others know you're coming through, and keep to the right when rounding corners. 
keep your speed under control and always watch for the unexpected. Casseroles and other hot plates call for extra care. Be sure to warn your guests when serving dishes are hot. And for your own protection, use a napkin or side towel. Hot liquids especially demand extra attention to protect your guests and yourself. A good waitress will always be on hand to bring fresh hot coffee when the guest wants it. But this kind of service can sometimes result in a mouthful of blisters. <laughs> Always make sure a guest knows when hot food or liquids have been brought to the table. It's easy sometimes to forget the hazards of hot foods and other dangerous materials when you work with them all the time. Here's one that's particularly touchy. When you are called upon to prepare a flaming dish, warn the guest to keep his distance. And please, don't get carried away. You only need enough flame to entertain the guests, not to set them on fire. And talking of fire, do you know where the fire extinguisher is located? Sometimes dishes present temptations too like the urge to overstack and save an extra trip to the kitchen. Careless stacking and handling of glassware and cups invites trouble. Broken glassware is razor sharp. Small chips are often so tiny the guest can't see them until it's too late. Glasses create special problems for young children and for you when you have to clean up after them. Why not a shorter glass? Or a higher seat? Or maybe a more flexible straw? Surely there's something you can do to prevent the inevitable. A shorter, broader-based glass might be the answer. But think about it. Well, everything seems under control here. Or is it? Eddie, watch it. Ah. Always, but always, watch where you're going in a crowded dining room. It could happen to you. So try to be extra alert during rush hour. And watch that floor. If a guest has placed something in the traffic lane, ask politely that it be moved. They won't mind. It's for their protection, too. Food or drink on the floor is your responsibility. If you spill it, you wipe it up. And if you drop it, you pick it up. Your responsibility to protect the lives of your guests extends especially to children. Some foods, such as fish, should be carefully checked. It is often advisable to let the parents know of any possible danger, such as bones. And utensils such as forks or knives should be left to the parents. They know the capacity of their children for handling such implements safely. Your responsibility begins with your preparations for work. Avoid jewelry or pins, which are a hazard in all food service. Follow instructions about the use of head covering or a hairnet to keep hair and hairpins firmly in place on your head where they belong. Shoes should be sensible with flat, comfortable heels. A man's footwear should be substantial with soles and heels in good condition. Keep laces firmly tied to avoid tripping. And finally, Know where the first aid cabinet is and how to use it. No matter how careful you are, there will always be someone else who finds out that dining rooms can be dangerous. A lot of rules to remember? Yes. Common sense procedures to remind you that it could happen to you. 
or to one of your guests. And if it did, where would you be tomorrow? bump that control by accident. You'd be mincemeat by now. What have I told you? You don't work on equipment when the engine's running. Well, I told him not to touch anything. All right, I guess I wasn't thinking. You weren't thinking? You mean you'll work on engines and machinery and not think of your own personal safety? Here, shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger, meet a man you ought to know. I used to laugh at safety, but now they call me <laughs> Three Fingered Joe. I was young and feisty, never did things by the book. Just let me get my tool box, and I'll take myself a look. I climbed up on a dozier with my mechanic's pride. Said that you can keep it running, friend, while I poke around inside. Shake hands with danger, meet a guy you want to know. I used to laugh at safety, now they call me <coughs> Three Fingered Joe. Although I learned a lesson, I forgot it soon enough. The nicks and burns and scratches showed the young ones I was tough. Till another morning I was grinding on some steel My other hand got careless and fed my skin into the wheel Shake hands with danger, step right up and say hello Grinding wheels and metal are what made me ill Three-fingered Joe I've seen mechanics burning and I've seen them take a fall just to save themselves a minute, I've seen them lose it all. I've watched them courting trouble, seen them take a chance and lose. They get careless for a moment and spend a lifetime with the blues.
out to them, I'm lucky to be just Three Finger Joe. <laughs> Of the amount of glee I saw in the previous film of the entire tray of dishes like smashing it was it's beautiful oh my gosh uh, those were great uh, there's one more film called the hamburger sandwich which uh, is very damaged and we might try to run that on a different scanner uh, because it's begun to shrink uh, with vinegar uh, so I got one more film I just wanted to show Shake Hands with Danger remix song uh, or Redux song uh, because it was in conjunction with uh, that amazing dining room safety film. Um, so here's something completely different uh, a fairy tale. Enjoy. This is the story of Briar Rose, the Sleeping Beauty. A long time ago, there lived a king and queen who said every day, if only we could have a child. It seemed to them that they had waited forever when an unexpected thing happened. One day, while the queen was bathing, a frog crept out of the water onto the land and spoke to her. Your wish shall be fulfilled. Before a year has passed, you shall have a daughter. What the frog said came true, and the queen brought a beautiful child into the world. Parents thought her so lovely they could hardly contain their joy. And the king ordered a great celebration. The honor of your presence is requested at the castle in celebration of the birth of a royal princess. Not only did he invite their relatives, friends, and acquaintances, but also the wise women who could use their magic powers to enrich the baby's life. There were 13 of these honored women in the kingdom, but as the king had only 12 golden plates and feared that nothing else would be good enough, one of the wise women could not be invited. After a splendid feast, the twelve wise women bestowed upon the baby many virtues, naming everything of true value in this world. I give you compassion, inner beauty, and riches of the spirit. Gifts are laughter, and tears. I give you hope, and wisdom, and imagination. for friendship and love. I bless you with self-knowledge. But when Eleven had spoken, the Thirteenth appeared, and furious at being left out, she raged. The King's daughter shall, in her fifteenth year, prick herself with a spindle and fall down dead. You can imagine everyone's shock. Fortunately, the twelfth wise woman had not yet spoken, and she stepped forward. She had no power to undo the spell, but only to soften it. 
So she said, it shall not be death into which the princess shall fall, but a deep sleep of a hundred years. All of the wise women's fond wishes for the child came true. She grew to be so lovely and modest and gentle and wise that she was cherished by everyone. And the king, who wanted dearly to protect his child from the evil spell, ordered that every spindle in the kingdom be destroyed. Believing that he had thus ensured his daughter's safety, he accepted a duty which took him and the queen away from the castle on the very day his daughter became 15. To pass the long day alone in the castle, the princess let her curiosity lead her wherever it would through enormous rooms and into darkened corners, through passageways and into bedchambers she wandered, exploring every nook of the castle until she came to an old tower, wherein a narrow, winding staircase beckoned her. At the top, she found a little door with a rusty key, and when she turned it, the door sprang open, and there, hidden away in a little room, sat an old woman spinning her flax. Good day, old mother, said the king's daughter. What are you doing there? I am spinning, said the old woman, and nodded her head. What sort of thing is that, rattling around so merrily, asked the girl. And scarcely had she reached for the spindle when she pricked her finger with it, and the magic decree was fulfilled, for she fell down upon the old woman's bed and was overcome by a deep sleep, which quickly spread over the entire castle. Downstairs, the king and queen, who had just returned and entered the great hall, were overcome by sleep. The horses, too, went to sleep in the stable, the dogs in the yard, the pigeons upon the roof, the flies on the wall. Even the fire on the hearth quieted and slept, and the roast stopped frizzling. And the cook, who was just about to pull the hair of the lazy scullery boy, let him go and went to sleep. And the wind fell, and on the trees before the castle, not a leaf moved again. All around the castle, a briar hedge with thorns as sharp as claws began to grow. Each year it grew higher, until finally it surrounded and covered the entire castle. So at last there was nothing left to be seen, not even the flags on the roof. And the story of the Sleeping Beauty, whom people began to call Briar Rose was told far and wide. And as time went on, many were the tales told of king's sons who tried to pass through the thorny hedge, but could not, for the briars held fast together as if they had hands. And still the story grew to tell of young princes who had been hopelessly caught and had perished among the thorns. After many, many years, there came another prince into the country. He chanced to hear an old, old man recounting the tale of Briar Rose, asleep in a thorn-covered castle, and of the many young men who had tried to no avail to break through the cruel hedge. But the youth said, I am not afraid. I will go and see the beautiful Briar Rose. The old man tried to dissuade him, but the prince would not listen. It just so happened that the hundred years had finally passed, and this was the dawning of the very day when Briar Rose was to awaken. So that when the prince approached the thorn hedge, 
the briars suddenly blossomed into wondrous flowers which parted and let him pass unharmed and then closed once more behind him. In the castle yard, the prince saw the horses and the spotted hounds asleep, and on the roof, the pigeons roosted with their heads under their wings. Inside the castle, the fly slept on the wall, and the sleeping cook still held out his hand to grab the lazy scullery boy, and the kitchen maid sat absolutely still with a hen in front of her that needed plucking. And further on, he saw the king and queen asleep in the great hall. And on he went and found only stillness. At last, he discovered the narrow stairway and climbed it and opened the little door where Briar Rose lay sleeping. And there she was, so beautiful that he could not turn his eyes away. And he stooped down and tenderly kissed her. And her eyes opened, and she smiled gently. Then they went down together, and the king awoke and the queen, and looked at one another in astonishment. And in the castle yard, the horses stood up and shook themselves. The spotted hounds jumped up and wagged their tails. The pigeons on the roof lifted their heads from under their wings, looked about, and flew into the open country. The flies on the wall crept again. The fire in the hearth flamed up and the meat began to frizzle. And the cook gave the kitchen boy such a box on the ears that he let out a howl. And the kitchen maid at long last plucked the chicken. And so, the Prince and Briar Rose were soon married in splendor. And they lived in contentment for the rest of their days. Ooh, that was close. Where am I? Uh, yeah, I had to break down all those um, national educational media uh, kitchen safety films and dining room safety films. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was a fairy tale for sure. Uh, entertaining, barely animated. It was animated, but I don't know. Does that count? It was. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Bro Al, you said it. They did a lot of telling and not much showing. <laughs> uh, anyway, so tomorrow, uh, join us. Tomorrow we're going to show our 5,000th film. 5,000 films. Um, now we've duplicated some, so, you know, the math is a little up in the air, but... 5,000 films. We're going we're gonna to go ahead. We'll say, like, sometime tomorrow we'll, we'll have seen 5,000 films. Um, maybe I'll just go ahead and call it what the 5,000 film is going to be tomorrow, but I don't know. I have. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Um, so we'll figure it out. Anyhow, hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Uh, love the comments. Love you guys watching. That's why we kind of do this. Bring your thumbs up. Uh, 
hit like, hit su subscribe, hit, I don't know, all the things, the positive buttons that you can hit on your social media dashboard uh, for us. That's great. Um, Hyrule Roll says, you guys on your 16th anniversary, right? No. Um, we're past our 30th anniversary. <laughs> uh, we've been doing this for a long time, since the mid-90s. Uh, I think 92 is when we got the first big batch of films. Um, but, yes, it's a lot. So, everybody hit like, subscribe. You can donate money to uh, ko-fi.com slash avgeeks. Patreon.com slash AV Geeks. Um, yeah. And we'll see you tomorrow. Everybody have a great rest of your Thursday. Um, pal.